Oh, Hello, yes. Amazing. It's me. I'm back. I've had a few weeks off. Heavens forbid. <laughs> oh, I've got to say, um, oh, I haven't opened up my uh, my sound bites. Um, let me just get that off the screen, shall I? Look, I'll say straight off the bat, I, I enjoyed my time off. I needed it. I feel refreshed. Uh, I feel ready to go. Um, and just to really put the nail in the coffin, to those people that whinged and inboxed me um, about why didn't you upload, you know, oh, it's two weeks in a row now and you haven't put in a show, I'm unsubscribing, um, politely go disappear somewhere, have sex with yourself in the next room for all I care. Uh, I wanted some time off, I'm not your slave. You know, I'm just doing this for my own enjoyment and for hopefully you, you might enjoy this as well. Uh, so you, you don't get to boss me around, unfortunately, for you. Uh, but here I am, I'm back for number 35. I feel refreshed, ready to go to talk about some stuff. Uh, you might see a big thing that's missing in that spot. There was a big Superman statue that used to be there. It is no longer there, obviously. I sold it because there's another big thing going there, <laughs> which I refuse to pay with my own money for. So... The Chaos Bringer Unicron, this big 30-something inch Transformer, planet Transformer. I've been going on about it on social media for quite some time. You've probably seen it. Uh, I'm paying that off. So it's almost here. <sighs> Finally. Um, unfortunately, they sent it to the wrong shop. <laughs> so I have to wait for them to relocate it to my local EV. Uh, it's in a warehouse somewhere else. So hopefully they get it to me in the next couple of weeks because I want it. So that'll be standing there. I'm going to move all my Transformers back there. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye on the background on the next couple of shows. Anyway, how have you been? Yeah, cool. No worries. Cool. It's, it's very interesting to hear. Uh, anyway, so let's get right into a few things here off the top of the show. Uh, this comics calendar. Now, this is my entry. I've talked about this on the show before and I've been posting this quite frequently in the recent times uh, just to say, look, this is what I'm a part of. This Australian comic art uh, portfolio collection calendar. There's a Kickstarter for it. It's already uh, made its money, which is good. It's already reached its funding um, from what I checked last time I checked and it's you know gone over a bit. Uh, but by all means, if you want to order yourself one, I'm not getting out anything out of it. It's just to really cover the uh, the printing costs and all that kind of stuff for all of us you can see the 18 other creators there so it's an 18 month calendar so you'll get more out of it than just a standard year i'm on september i believe of this year if i'm incorrect i'm pretty sure it's this year uh september is my birth month so i'm pretty happy that i got to uh, uh, secure that month uh, but yes this is the uh, p picture that you'll get that i'm submitting is my character that i've created for a comic that i'm working on that i've been trying to work on for a long time uh called like it's called guardian of honor and that's kale learn him the, the man himself um a lot of story i'm not gonna waste your time talking about the story about him i'll cover that in another time when i've got more to talk about it but for me this is going to be kind of a, a good point of reference and a starting point to kind of really start uh you know getting getting a move on with it so i hope to release a, the cover for the issue one or at least um, like a representation of the cover for the book that i'm working on uh in about a month i think i might have it out but um keep an eye on my socials uh and speaking of socials um feel free to consider joining the chunk core uh you can see it in the links down below on the screen uh chunk core i mentioned it some videos back it's just a word that i use a term for you guys uh that want to join what i do or follow what i do and, and uh, you know keep track of my movements and my uploads and my socials and stuff it's just an all-encompassing word that i want to use and i made a um a quote for it like the green lantern core um the quote that i wanted to do one so that was a bit of fun uh yeah so do all that follow all the links and all that nonsense and um we'll get right back into it so yes what we're going to start with there's been a lot of news that's happened since i've been away there's too much to catch up on <laughs> so i'm gonna try and just nut it down to a few little topics here but first off as always we've got the ask chunt for the day and uh, this is just a, a way for me to give you guys some viewer feedback or viewer interaction 
uh, when you ask a question on the bottom of my comments or on a social media post or you know whatever uh, it's probably easy just to leave a comment below the video but uh, wherever you want to just like hashtag ask, ask chunt or something like that and i might see it somewhere anyway so this comes from the sing um which actors have you met that are nice and who was not <laughs> so i'm not sure i think i've spoken to you about this before i know um, the sing i know him um and you might know who i'm going to choose <laughs> these two stories in particular so initially what we're gonna start with here is um jason david frank of green ranger fame so those of you who don't know <laughs> uh, i am a power ranger fan i i enjoy the franchise i know it, i know it's not made for my age demographic but the comic books are the boom studios comics have been excellent uh i really enjoy that line and it's it's a good reimagining of the the franchise as a whole and i think man i wish the tv show could be more like it but uh anyway uh, i grow up i grow up i grow grew up far out if i can talk uh in the era of mighty morphin power rangers where this is where his career started basically oh he got his uh his names um out there from this show in particular so yeah big fan for years you know i was a green ranger fan a white ranger fan white ranger was my guy for the longest time uh i was a jason um uh, jason lee scott uh you know the red ranger the original red ranger fan he was i wanted to be that guy when i was a kid um i looked up to that character and just the the way that austin st john played him i was like man i would i want to be like that uh, you know i was that kind of fan um so anyway over the years i've um ebbed and flowed on it and uh jason i've always been a fan of uh jason david frank i thought he was pretty cool and he comes across as fun and he's very dedicated to the the property and all that kind of stuff uh you know i used to have all the collectibles like i had so much money morphed and stuff but I, I got rid of it all sold it at some point when i had to move long story short i ended up going to meet him one day at uh supernova which is a comic con type thing in australia and uh, i was really hyped i was like holy crap like i i just recently met austin st john i think at a supernova before this one so austin st john was the first power ranger i ever met which i was so happy with because you know, like i just said he was I wanted to be that guy uh, the character that he played when i was a kid and i'll i'll talk about that in another story because this is about jason david frank and um why he wasn't nice anyway so i go to meet him super hyped i was with a bunch of friends uh who were like we all went together to go meet some rangers that were there that year and i'm pretty sure he was the only one there that year but so th there was a lot of talk going on with the comic con circuits with um jason david frank how there's rumors going around saying that he's in his contracts he can't be there with other ranger actors like he for some reason i don't i don't want to like step over any lines here or say something incorrectly but the rumors that i've read was that he wants to be the only ranger at a con at any particular time or some rangers just don't like him or the angels the actors just don't like him too much um yeah whatever he just butt heads with people this is just rumors and stuff that i've heard um so but it's just funny the one i went to i think he was the only region ranger there anyway but uh needless to say we will continue with the story so the cameras i was in the line and cameras were on like for the local news networks they found out you know some of the actors that were there and they come in and film some of the actors and interview them uh while they're doing the signing lines and uh you know he's full of energy you know cameras are on lights are on let's go he does his jason david frank thing that i've been used to seeing him do like on youtube and in interviews and uh, and other kind of stuff that he does on his channel and his instagram posts and whatnot so i get to the line and i notice that his energies is gone and um i get get to talk to him and he's just he's just head down like signing whatever and he, and he messed up the first one that he signed and he got another one out just to do another one and, and i was like man yeah, how are you going he just wouldn't even raise his head to me i was just trying to have a chat with him and he's just like oh you know just signing away and, oh look i'm just really tired and i feel sick and you know um the the plane was rough and oh i didn't get much sleep and i'm like well hang on a minute like hey you're not even like looking at me <laughs> first off like, i've paid money to come see you the least you can do is acknowledge my presence uh like the rest of us in the line and um secondly like i understand you're a human i get that I, i'm of age that i can appreciate your um physical presence and being a human that you know has emotions and feelings and you know i get tired too <laughs> but um 
you were just on for all the cameras like you were a bundle of energy ready to go and then you just like click and it's all gone um and where the people paying to see you uh the whole time barely even lifted his head to see me uh i was actually pretty um pissed off about it to be honest because you just have a couple minutes if that in the line where they, they're just trying to push you through and um you're looking for you hyped up for the time before and during and when you get there it's all like your excitement is up and you're keen to see this person that you've like seen in this show that you've loved and you're finally going to meet the guy and you know you want it to be a good experience and you'd expect it to be that way and a lot of these well not a lot but some people some of these celebrities that you meet it's one of those things where sometimes you shouldn't meet your hero and he was one of the times where that was a fact <laughs> where i was like really disappointed with it and um fair enough he might have been true with what he was saying but just can't can you know just uh, be respectful to the people that are coming to see you and maybe just just elevate your energy levels a bit like you did a couple minutes ago when the cameras are on that's all i'm gonna say like I, i'm trying not to sound too much like an entitled asshole but i mean fair go if people were coming to see me at a table and i wasn't having such a good day i would understand like all right i need to kind of just pick myself up and make this day a good experience for these people that are going out of the way to see me that's how i see that and that's not what he did and i i left uh, that experience and was talking to a couple of mates uh, who went before me and yeah, they had similar a similar problem like just no acknowledgement and then later on more cameras came out and then bam he's up out of his chair and you know doing the doing his stuff that he think and i was like oh man i was really pissed off about that not much of a fan at all uh and the second i'm going to add another one here the second one uh there was another event year where um dragon ball z hype was coming or dragon ball z i should say was coming back uh the mo animated movies were great like battle of the gods and resurrection f were kind of all the deal all the rage and uh chris sabat and sean Schemmel came out one year and i went out of my way to go to that because i've always wanted to meet those two uh forever like i'm a real i'm a big well, not, i'm not like huge um anymore like, as much as i used to be but like anyone i love dragon ball and dragon ball z in particular um dragon ball super i hadn't really started until those two animated movies came out in, in australia anyway so you know this is ages ago now but so i was like oh my god i can't believe i'm gonna be able to see these two like these voices are just through my high school years you know <laughs> the vegeta and goku those two voices are just a big part of my life um and you know all my friends used to play the dragon ball card games and all the video games together and so it was a big kind of thing i was really excited for so when you line up um both uh, chris and sean had a little standee on their desk about what you can ask or you know they can, you can ask them to give you a shout out like on video or you can ask them to do a character for you or you know you give them 20 bucks or whatever you know it's like a fiver type thing where you give them some money based on the the flyer on the table and the standee thing and you would assume that flyer is there with the things you can ask them and you you would think they would oblige because it's on their desk um as something that they're promoting to do you know you pay a bit extra they give you something back cool you understand that right yeah cool all right so i went up to chris sabat first in his line and um i got him <laughs> on video to do something for me so i'll play that now because it will give context for what i'm going to say next so this is what he did hopefully this comes through I hope that came through. I'm not sure if that recorded, but um, I got him on video basically saying uh, something about you know, Uncle Chunt TV. Um, it's going to double check that played. I didn't see the audio levels going up, so I'll just play that again, Sam. bye anyway i hope that played for you if it didn't uh it's on my youtube channel <laughs> if you want to go check it out um so that was cool that was great i uh it's on my website i put it down the side panel as well as well as a couple other actors that i've met um over the years uh but next to him was sean shamel uh for those of you who don't know from base what i'm just saying uh he did the voice of goku in dragon ball so uh, he was next. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm meeting the guy that did the voice of Goku that everybody knows in um, 
the most popular fashion like the voice of goku has changed um over the years before sean came on but he's the iconic version of it that everybody knows everybody is familiar with at least in america and australia um i understand other countries have different voice actors depending on the language but he is uh, for all intents and purposes goku outside of japan and um yeah anyway so i go over to his line line up i'm having the same feelings you know oh my god i can't wait this is gonna be fantastic he had the same information on his desk the same flyer uh the same standee um with the same like you can you can ask him to do xyz so i had a little chat with him like man you know it's happy to see him blah blah you know what's your name blah, blah, and he's signing anything i said oh look i pull out a 20 dollar note and his face dropped and i was like all right i said hey look i just i was with, over at chris's desk and i can see you've got the same standee thing i want to know you know if i can ask you to do a video and um he's like no i'm not doing that i'm like oh okay well you know and he seemed really offended by it i was like oh, i only asked because you've got the it's on your desk <laughs> you know it's on your table here so you know hopefully I, I didn't piss you off he's like no i'm not doing that just put your money away and he's like really like snotty about it i'm like oh all right and um he just shut off from that point like his attitude completely changed um i was i had, I had a mixture of kind of things i'm like shit well the one time i get to meet this guy i'm just being an honest fan and asking to see if he can do the thing that is an offer on his desk and he's offended or he's pissed off that i've asked him to do that then why the hell is it on his desk and that's what i'm i was like what i had all these feelings going through my head and i'm like fuck the one time i meet this guy and i've pissed him off <laughs> you know like, i i couldn't believe it and um you know i tried to apologize to him but he just wasn't responding and i did, and i walked away thinking well fuck why, why am i apologizing for something that was on his desk as an offer so i was pretty um put off by that it's like a, a really great experience on one side and then uh the next minute i was like oh, what, what the hell and i've since learned after that interaction i i did some google searching i'm like is he always like this so i went looking for some fan um interactions just like posts and forums and whatnot and um yeah it turns out that he's just like that for some reason i, I don't know why uh i i've looked at some videos on youtube with some interviews and he's um he's not happy to kind of he doesn't want to be the kind of the guy that does the voice kind of fella and i was like well you're in the wrong business mate <laughs> you're a voice actor uh-oh heavens forbid your fans ask you to do the voice they love you for like the fans are the ones that are paying you to do the thing they come back to, to hear you do that voice i don't know i just thought it was really silly like th these two people chris about was an absolute legend by the way i will say i didn't say that before but he was so cool <laughs> so just happy to be there and uh, when he, he yelled out chunt so loud that everybody in the lines beside him turned around and looked at us and i was like i was so like you could, i hope you could hear that in the video if it played or not um god i hope it did I, I couldn't see the levels moving but i haven't changed any of my settings so i assume it worked but i was trying not to laugh because i wanted the video that was such a good moment and i'm glad i got that um i got that forever on, on video but yeah so jason david frank and sean shamel look uh, just based on my experience and others that have confirmed similar experience with them i mean i go go for it if you have a chance to meet them have your own experience but um i just wouldn't go out of your way for it maybe they're maybe they've changed since then i mean people do change who knows they they legit might have been having bad days but as i said from my perspective if there's fans lining up paying you know 30 bucks or more to have a signature from you and um 50 bucks to have a photo with you i mean the least you could do is kind of just show up you know that's all i'm going to say i will say chris Sabat and um sean uh, sean shemmel in the photo i got with them um damn it i should have prepared that the great photo too i walked in they're like oh god damn oh <laughs> well, you're 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 a pretty big fella <laughs> and i was like yeah I was, i'm like a head above them and um shook their hand and they're like god damn like sean had a really soft hand i'm gonna say but yeah, they couldn't believe it like oh man that's a pretty strong handshake and like what are we gonna do um and we had like, like those real kind of tough guy pose with both of them like back to back that, that was really cool like that moment was better than the one at the desk uh, so i'm I'll take it take it or leave it jason david frank's photo uh op that i got was real like bang 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 just it was just getting through them it's like all right what are you doing 
no time to kind of chat i like i had two morphers with me two gold morphers so i took the opportunity to kind of get a morphing pose with him and i gave him one of mine and you know we did the thing that was like a real nerdgasm moment um even in spite of the bad before but anyway yeah so hopefully that's a long answer <laughs> but um there were a few stories to tell in there that i wanted to give it time to breathe so you can enjoy that hopefully you did anyway so let me know down below in the comments if you've met a celebrity at uh, supernova or comic con uh, type thing uh, and if you've had a bad experience i don't want to like um build a bridge for negativity here but uh I'm, i've shared some of my negative stories here with a couple of people that i've paid to go sign uh, you know meet at a desk uh, when they couldn't be bothered to kind of turn up for um let me know if you've had any similar experiences i'd be interested to know uh yeah so cool so we're like 20 minutes in <laughs> and we haven't even got to the first topic yet <laughs> so i'll um i'll just cut to the chase and uh, we'll move along now so there's a bit of comic book uh stuff at the top of the show now we're going to kind of do some gaming news before we go back into more of the comic book side of the world uh so playstation i know this is going to seem very very on the nose because i have um two xbox lights behind me um uh, and a, a duke controller badge on my <laughs> boom arm here um yeah but i'm gonna talk about it anyway because it's it's bare repeating um so playstation i think is in trouble i really do and why is that now i understand they're selling through their consoles so fast that we can't even get them but is that just because of the lack of volume out there or are all the scalpels buying them up i don't know but for one reason or another like we know there are production problems in the world um almost every device like apple can't get the chips they need um microsoft's are having trouble xbox uh, sony and playstation switch like they're all having trouble getting the same type of components from the same uh, manufacturers basically just to really uh, simplify that topic so that's why there are production and volume uh, troubles why we can't get these consoles or a lot of these devices besides that uh, scalpels are always um jumping in when the next load of stock comes through and getting the ps5s before anyone else can but besides that problem we have a problem with just sony uh running or playstation running itself into the ground <laughs> you know just from my perspective and uh twitterverse seems to agree uh so well they must be onto something so since we've had jim ryan come into the fold which we've described and talked about on the let's talk games podcast a few times now it's it just repeat news from ever since jim ryan's come on the helm it, it's, it's just been bad news after bad news right so let's recap a few things here uh, and we'll get into some of the more recent stuff so jim ryan he's the uh the guy the head of um sony uh in interactive entertainment whatever america um basically he replaced sean Layden's role which was unceremonious to say the least <laughs> um sean Layden, which i'll talk about later um yeah I'll, I'll just talk about that later anyway jim ryan he's shuttered japan studio which have brought you most of the uh most of the commonly known playstation titles throughout playstation history all the way back from the playstation one like they built um i would argue one of the first 3d uh platformers or 3d first person platformers jumping flash they, they were they were there from all the way back then to this year <laughs> basically when they just shuttered them um so that they've got a, a lineage there of 20 plus years and that studio is gone they got rid of it uh they've stopped ben studio who are infamous i guess maybe infamously known for making days gone and uh they said no to a sequel for that and essentially have made them as a sub naughty got a uh, naughty dog support studio for whatever this next project is or this remake for um the last of us uh last of us yeah the last of us uh remake for ps5 that no one asked for and is not needed at all but they're going to pull resources into making that i don't understand that decision all these decisions so far are like why why is that you know days gone was profitable but it might not have got the same critical acclaim you expected but it has fans and it made money but let's not do another one and let's just 
kill that studio and absorb it okay that doesn't make sense so now they've kind of been talking about resting on their goals and laurels and uh, making the playstation brand as a more of a a global appeal uh with more triple a experiences like uncharted and last of us making cross media uh attempts i will say <laughs> or projects uh you know like movies and tv shows like they're doing the last of us tv show and uh there's a ghost of shishima movie being made and they tried it with the ratchet and clank uh, movie a while back um you know so they're going into this you know tv 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 you know the whole xbox 2013 anyone this is what this sounds like don matrick yeah it's his soul coming to jim ryan's body and is having another go at it you know, you know like oh man i i don't understand what's happening here like xbox got too a uh, fat one when they came out in 2013 with all the tv and movie stuff but now like sony's been trying to do it and they're slowly shuttering some studios and moving away from japan to the to the point where just for an example japan x and circle those commands are flipped in the west as you know them i'm going to assume you know them as x is uh, accept and circle is cancel or escape those are backwards in japan and always have been but um since more and more power there's a power shift coming through um trying to make sony america the one that's calling the shots rather than japan and that started happening when you go back through the trail when sean Layden left um i'll bring up his photo just so you can know who the hell i'm talking about sean Layden. um look he, he had a presence on stage it was very confident and very like i wouldn't say pompous but very sure of himself with what he's putting forward yeah it came off one way or another you either liked it or you didn't but i respected that i respected him coming out and some of the messaging that he gave on stage sometimes was real good and just backing um the games that they were making uh, he would often say yeah it might not have made a lot of money or yeah it might not have had critical success but you know we believed in the x game you know and he would be like that that was the kind of guy he was and why you liked playstation was him at the head of it uh, during his tenure there like during the ps3 ps4 like all that kind of stuff i can't remember if he was during the ps2 era but you can be confident in saying that he's been part of sony and playstation for a long time so what you've enjoyed is um with help with sean right so i want him to come back like, i'm not a playstation guy but i respected what he did and i enjoyed what uh how he backed his product and uh it's a far cry from what playstation has been you know in the last what year or since like jim ryan's came on um and this is jim ryan by the way look he, does that guy look like a guy with a plan <laughs> if he does it's the wrong plan i can tell you that uh so yeah this is jim yeah that's that's jim all right uh so this is the guy who now all this is happening with so um all these studios the sony studios that are being shut down uh the whole i don't believe in our old games talk that he does where you know he's famously quoted by saying oh, i went to a sony event where they were playing ps1 2 3 and 4 games um you know as a celebration for playstation and i saw those games and i was like why does anyone want to play those they look so old and that's the guy that's heading your studio at the moment see the polar opposite from the guy that i just talked about with sean where he's like yeah it didn't make the money or you know it wasn't as critically received but it was a great game we believe in x games and blah 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 and this guy has just done the the basic opposite of all of that and is just tearing that all apart anyway so the ps4 also this is another bit of news here the ps4 has recently been shown to have a major fault with, the, with its system the cmos battery now if anything happens to that connection with the cmos battery or if the battery dies or if there's a fault with the component or anything like that um for those of you who don't understand the cmos battery is there and it's needed to keep time on the console and it helps to keep track of the psn like with the connection either via ethernet or wireless like it's there to have this continuous kind of check-in uh with you know the trophies or sync issues or the time on the psn network and all that that's what that's there for and every time you load a game it does a check while you're on the network but it needs that cmos to be there um, i'm really kind of just simplifying what this actually does because i know not everybody's going to understand it but anyway why i'm describing that part and what that function is is because if anything happens to that 
uh, you will no longer be able to play the digital games you've bought or you'll no longer be able to play the physical games that you put in because it can't um, it won't go through that process to look at the trophies or to sync trophies or to speak to PSN or you know whatever it needs to do it just won't load it it won't start you'll get the splash screen like you know when you start a game and it has a wallpaper of the game you're about to play and then it loads the game it'll boot up the uh the wallpaper example of what the game is and then it'll give you an error code which basically is saying like i i can't speak to psn i don't know what i'm doing and i'm not going to play this game that is a major fault that is a major design fault now basically every other console doesn't have that problem <laughs> it's it's uh i, I think ps3 uh, i saw discussions that that has the same problem which i'm concerned about because i recently just got a ps3 and that's an older system so these cmos batteries they can last anywhere between 5 to 10 to 15 years depending on what the model battery is i don't know what the battery is that i have in the ps3 that i've got but it's a ps3 slim maybe it's got a lot longer lasting one it still works it booted up just fine it connected the psn i got all my stuff but that leads me into the next part with PSN. So during his tenure so far, this is all happening. And also they're shutting down the PSN stores for PS3, PS Vita, and you'll no longer be able to buy PS3 or PS Vita games or the PS Classics or any PS2 games that are on there uh, at all. They're, that's all getting taken away. Um, and there's question about whether the patches will still come down for games. Like if you choose to download games that you've pre-purchased on your account and you go to download them will they get the patches as well because those of you who play games you understand that there are day one patches that are required for a game to function at all you know or you'll play like a severely gimped version like if you just install the base game that you've downloaded and you don't get the patches that are required that happen years sometimes after the game launches just to keep fi fixing bugs and stuff then your game is just going to be either a buggy mess or unplayable or just a very gimped version of it if that makes sense so there's risk of all that not happening for there's a, a list out there already that people have confirmed that these games will have these problems uh because these patches will not come down so there's already problems happening there um now you've got till july if there's any games on psn for ps3 that if you're still using a ps3 like i am and there's other people out there that are still using their ps3s and playing their old games because uh, jim ryan there are still people out there that like to play old games <laughs> i have a whole shelf back here full of old games uh for i'm getting ps2 ps3 games xbox 360 mega drive original xbox i've got heaps of stuff back there that i'm still pl um, pl planning to play that i've bought or i've played and i want to play again you are backwards mate i'm just saying you are completely backwards now all of this and you've got to august for vita the vita store and the vita psn stuff that's shutting down in august so you've got july till august to kind of get your ps3 and vita fix done if you haven't jumped on it already so get on it get on it now the, the cmos battery thing that i talked about ps4 this is the newest bit of news uh it's been now discovered someone took the chance to brick their ps5 basically and uh took apart the ps5 and removed the cmos battery and then reconnected it uh, sorry they they um, removed the cmos battery and tried to boot it up to replicate the problem that the ps4 is having and yes it's the same problem um no longer were the games that were digitally uh downloaded they can't run or they can't play those games same as the di uh, the disc based versions they can't play those either so when they put the cmos battery back in um it still had problems um i don't understand exactly how you know i'm not that kind of guy that can pull apart a ps5 and figure out those intricacies but they have discovered that the same problems are there for the ps4 on the ps5 so i mean you know yeah these batteries do last a long time cool but sometimes they don't like there are faults on systems that are unexpected all the time if anything happens to that component you're basically stuffed i don't understand why this is such an oversight in their design where it's been confirmed that xbox series x and series s don't have this problem they don't have this cmos risk that i've just been describing here it's just not a factor and i'm pretty sure i read if i'm incorrect please tell me that the xbox one consoles don't have this same problem and uh basically every other console yeah you remember the days where like even dreamcast for god's sakes its battery just doesn't work like the cmos battery for it is just like no nah, i'm good i'm just gonna forget the time all, all together and oh what you want to play a game no worries just put it in 
I don't see why they made the design to go through uh, for like authentication, authentication, I'll just put in quotation marks, uh, for the trophies and to speak to the PSN. I don't know why it's just housed in, it's such a single point of failure at that point. Um, where 2013, Xbox had to backtrack all of that, the DRM stuff, the 24 hour check-ins, you know, the to Xbox Live and all this kind of shit with the backlash. But since this has been discovered, like a lot of people are going, what the hell is going on, Sony? What are you doing? Like, what the hell is happening over there? This is just so backwards thinking. I, I don't understand who thought this was a good idea. We should be able to, I don't know, move our consoles to a mate's place. Or if we've moved houses and our internet hasn't been set up, we should be able to just, you know, set up our PlayStation or Xbox or whatever and still be able to play our games without having to check in. Steam has a check-in um, service that you need, but um, you can download your games directly to your computer and um, play them that way. Like you can download them to your library and you can still play them. Even though we're installing our games on our consoles, we can't play them because it needs to check in. I, I don't understand that at all. It's, it's a big problem and I'm really kind of on the fence of actually getting a PlayStation 5 at all. Um, I, I'm in two minds because I do have games on my PSN account for ps4 games that i got on sale like really good sales that i plan to play eventually <sighs> will i just hold off and see if they patch this or do i take the risk but then the moral dilemma i have is do i speak with my wallet and don't buy a ps5 just based on this like why would i support that such a flaw like why would i want to invest in this machine that I could have for you know a decade or whatever if, if there's games on there that i really want to go back and play like the ps3 am i going to be able to play them <laughs> you know all of them i've bought so far are digital am i going to be able to play them i have a big problem with that so i don't know if any of you guys are aware of all this but that's why i'm kind of making a big point of it and a good chunk of this video about these problems like i have i also have zero faith that they're going to patch this out because if jim ryan is still in power and he's like, no one wants to play our old games. Let's get rid of PSN for their old systems. Um, yeah, let's just release our consoles with this CMOS problem. I don't know if he was aware of that. But whoever is in engineering, I can't remember that guy's name, but he's super freaky. Uh, the guy that made PS4 and um, all that kind of stuff. Um, God, his name escapes me right now. You guys know what I'm talking about. He's just like, he really talks to you with his eyes open all the time. He, and he talks like this. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's an alien. But he, uh, he's the guy behind it, right? And he should have known that that was a problem. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, like I said, I have zero faith they're going to fix it. Uh, I spoke to, um, I'm going to call you out, Snoogs. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to watch this, but um, I have seen the, your counter argument. So I'm, that's why I'm bringing it up. Oh, the screen's went off. I'm bringing up this side of the argument because it does, it's a fair comment. I said, I'm not going to buy this until they do a firmware patch. And the, the counter argument is like, well, they're not going to do that if it's not going to make them money or if there's no like commercial uh, profit or benefit for them to do that. And uh, I was like, well, Xbox backtracked everything in 2013. Uh, that would have cost them a lot of money. Um, they backtracked on the increase of the Xbox Live cost. They backtracked on that based on feedback. Uh, Xbox ha is now making mini fridges. They're actually putting mini fr fridges into production. Uh, based on a twitter vote <clears throat> you know aaron greenberg marketing guy was like i'm watching this competition between skittles and xbox about you know a skittles flavor or a mini fridge xbox and the, the mini fridge xbox one he's like well he's basically he tweeted out saying if we win this vote uh i'll i'll put it into production i'll make it happen and, and that's costing them money <laughs> you know so xbox and microsoft at least in the current team um are more likely to fix those kind of problems whereas sony i don't believe they'll do that at all i think they'll just pass it off as a um well too late too bad you know if you want to play your ps4 games and, and your ps4 is bricked buy a ps5 but now that we know that the ps5 has the same problem why would you buy a ps5 <laughs> you know like i'm in two minds now of just finding a dirt cheap ps4 somewhere just so i can get through my psn back catalog you know like a I don't want to give Sony money for such a faulty product. I'd rather just go to this guy who's like, yeah, I don't play my PS4 anymore. I'll give it to you for a hundred bucks, whatever. I'm more inclined to do that, you know, 
just to vote with my wallet. I, I, I've been doing that a lot more these days. It's probably because I'm getting older, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I, this, I'm going to stop talking about it. There's, there's so much more in depth to speak about. And I, I, I've spent way too much time on it already, but it is worth talking about. I've, I've seen some people where I've tweeted about this and they weren't aware of these problems. Uh, that's why I added it in here today uh, amongst everything else that I could have chosen to. So if you're a PlayStation gamer, are you aware of these problems? And now that you know about these problems, are you concerned? Or do you play old games? Like, Are you like me where you have a library of old games that you want to keep just in case you want to play them? at some point like you might not be in having any urgency to play these old games but i would disagree with jim saying that no one wants to play them you know there are plenty of people like me and you see them on social media and youtube all the time and even some of your friends well they'll have on their shelves all these old games that they grew up with or that they've bought again because they want to relive some of these games you know do you play old games or do you have an intention to like are you concerned that you're $500 PS4 or your six or $700 PS5, however much it was, are you concerned that's going to brick itself one day and you won't be able to play all those games that you've invested thousands of dollars in digitally, digitally, game, digitally bought games that you've invested in, <laughs> thousands of dollars. Even your physical disc games won't work on them because it can't talk to PSN once that dies. That's a big problem, you know, a big problem. Anyway, yeah. Hashtag bring back Sean. Seriously, Sean Layden, man, you need to come back. Like, I've always been an Xbox guy, but when you were in uh, the, the driving seat of PlayStation, even I could respect it, <laughs> you know? I have zero respect for PlayStation right now. <sighs> anyway, that's a massive rant, but um, I know more about it now than I did when we spoke about it on, PS um, on Let's Talk Games in recent times. I I've gotten a bit more familiar with what some of the problems are and just tried to really simplify some of it just to discuss while we're here um, anyway finally to the official second topic <laughs> after the ask chant after the uh um cal the calendar stuff and where i've been or whatever and playstation i actually got to go to the cinemas last night shock horror i know but there's a lot of people out there that don't get to do that uh, so i'm very lucky i'm blessed i'm fully aware of that so what did I see? I saw Godzilla vs. Kong last night, 9 o'clock. I, I basically had the cinema to myself. There was no one there. No one in my showing, at least. There were people coming out of previous sessions before me, but when I went in to my 9 o'clock at night session on a Saturday evening, I was the only guy in the cinema, and that's just the way I like it. I was dead center. I was in the, the middle of the cinema behind the, uh, the barrier that is before the next like forward rows it was like right dead center and it was the best seat in the house i always try to get that seat <sighs> it's great i had my popcorn and my frozen um frozen soft drink oh my god you don't miss what you've you don't miss what you had until it's not there anymore like i, I love going to the cinema and it's been a long time but between movies because we all know um, you know hollywood has slowed down a lot since covid um so i, I jumped at the chance the first the first thing i could get to a session and i went to see this and it was great um so what did i think of it man like i uh like i said to dan and jamie <laughs> i don't need every movie to be batman versus superman where i can you know analyze it for years after it's released and still find new stuff and you know read into the 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 lines of things and the double meanings and the symbology of everything and i don't need every movie to do that as much as i love it so in saying that this was nothing like that <laughs> um this was like a 200 million dollar cgi battle between two giant monsters and it looked expensive as hell and I, I loved it every second of it i was just sitting there going hell yeah i'm so glad i saw this on the big screen it was very much worth it it's a it, you just turn yourself turn your brain off like i see people really picking this movie apart like trying to um trying to rationalize everything to do with a movie that's about technology that doesn't exist in our world for a start <laughs> like they're using tech in, that doesn't exist uh about a hollow earth um oh spoilers I, I guess man it's been out for a few weeks now if you've wanted to see it you would have done it by now spoiler alert if you haven't already anyway so yeah it's about technology that we don't have in our real world with flying cars that can handle crushing gravity 
and uh, time displacements and shit. I don't know. And a hollow earth, like literally a, they go through a portal to another earth that's inside earth and there's no uh, point of light. Like there's no sun down there, but it's bright as hell. Where, where's, the, where's the light source down there? Who knows? Anyway, and uh, besides all that, <laughs> it's, there's like an ancient history between the Kong race and the Godzilla race or just the two of them, you know. And there's carvings on the walls and someone's built a structure down there that nobody knows. There's no, who the hell built this? You know, Kong's never been there. How, what, how did he you know what to do it in? And who made the axe? And, you know, where did Godzilla come from? And how, how come Godzilla can't get down there? And anyway, uh, there's people picking this movie apart besides the stupid humans. Like, the humans really don't matter at all. They're just there to kind of expel what's happening, even though you can see what's happening and you can kind of just you could just sit there and watch the movie unfold without the humans going i am doing this and this is why kind of stuff exposition that's the word i'm looking for but whatever you know exactly what you're going in for this movie isn't going to try change your life and it, it doesn't um try to make itself that kind of movie either <laughs> if you are like yeah i really want to go see a movie about a giant monkey fighting and punching a giant lizard in the face uh you, you should know what you're in for and that's exactly what this is and I loved it. Re I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I would go see it again just because it, the sheer spectacle of it. It looks very expensive. It's either that or I've been away from movies, uh, like big movies like this for so long that I'm wowed by it again. <laughs> like the, the sheer scale of it and the sound and the, the CGI and the Christmas, uh, crispness of the CGI and just the gods i love the look of the godzilla is this big and chunky kind of i really do enjoy these new monster movies like godzilla and king of the monsters skull island was cool uh they do explain why kong is bigger in this one there's a lot of discussion about that like how the hell is king kong gonna fight godzilla when he's like half as big or or less they do explain that um which i, I don't want to spoil too much because i've already spoiled a lot <laughs> but I, I did warn you just briefly uh yeah so look um you know take your mates like if you if you're not in a covid area <laughs> or if you can go to a cinema that's actually open um well maybe you can just check out hbo max just do that from the safety of your own home do get a vpn sign up to hbo max and um just watch it there i think you can still watch it or rent it uh through hbo max at the moment but uh, i am glad i saw it on the big screen um there's not much to talk about <laughs> besides the fact that the trailers don't give away anything like basically some of the stuff that i've already said i've spoiled um isn't in the trailers at all and i remember sitting there going oh that's what this is okay i, I didn't expect that at all i mean you, you did see some shots in the trailers of a giant other creature with glowing red lights which was immediately you go oh is that mecha godzilla you know it was like oh well spoiler it they, they basically spoiled the movie um a part of the movie in the trailers i hate when they do that but that was awesome i will say that mecha godzilla was pretty damn cool and very threatening you know i'm only talking about it because i've a i've told you about spoilers b it's in the trailers um and c you probably should have seen it already if you're going to but that was excellent uh very imposing and threatening figure i will say uh but the fights there was, there's only three of them but they're big and they're burly a lot of people die um some cities will cease to exist <laughs> hmm. uh yeah I, I i will buy this i think i'll buy this on blu-ray uh, i'm literally seriously thinking about tracking down uh the blu-rays for these monster movies godzilla king of monsters skull island and this um i want another one i hope they continue these it's just dumb fun but it's not the transformers dumb fun like it's not michael bay dumb fun the cinematography in this movie is amazing it's a beautiful movie i'll just say that like it's stunning to look at besides the scale and the spectacle it's just it's very nice and pretty to look at you know and the score by um uh tom holkenberg i think i said his name right or junkie xl you might know as but he doesn't like to be referenced as that anymore uh he's of like man is still bvs uh mad max uh, fury road justice uh it's not it's actually not a justice league like he's scored all of those and other things uh and he's done this one as well and I, I, there were some repeat cues that took me out of it a bit I'm like oh that's very justice league oh that's very bvs you know i understand it's his signature cool no worries but 
it did kind of take me out so i've listened to a lot of movies that happen to have his soundtrack in them so sue me but yes um as i said there's not much to talk about the story is very just there just to move the fight along just to explain why the next fight is going to happen there's no real kind of in-depth law that you need to be concerned about a lot of it is like i could do some explaining of that but you didn't <laughs> what does that mean you know that seems interesting uh there's some of that in there and uh it's worth exploring maybe in a comic book or you know another mini series i don't know hbo max might want to revisit some of this lore in a hbo max series i'd be behind that uh the, oh, the one chick in this movie she's like the rule of the bad um executive um you know super fine just she knows she's hot and she knows she's top shit uh i was i need to figure out who that is i mean she was stunning and i was like god damn when she came on screen i'm like wow who's that mm, who's that mm. uh but yeah anyway besides all that man uh, pff, i want another godzilla movie already i could i'm not really too fast on king kong never been a king kong fan godzilla is just badass I, i've never been a godzilla fan either you know just to be totally transparent here but this new godzilla in these new movies i really really like he's just big and burly and looks like he can literally just rip the world apart i really really love it so anyway go see it i recommend it i'll give it i don't do the rating thing but i just thought about doing it i'll just i'll just give it all right three and a half chance out of five whatever that means there's no precedent for it so take that as you will <laughs> yes cinema it's a great experience and my xbox batteries are dying in those lights back there so fantastic um it's probably good because this is the last topic and it's a small one because we're getting long on this one um i've been away for a few weeks so i thought i'd take the time to kind of talk a bit and i need to upload this very quick so the next topic what is it well yeah it's more zack snyder's justice league news <laughs> and it's about these two all right so just quickly justice con happened this weekend which is a online con uh by fans of the snyder cut and the justice league and Zack snyder and all of his stuff and um they are kind of the driving force behind the release of snyder cut campaign and all that and now they're kind of running through this restore the snyder cut thing where they want the snyderverse to continue um and there's a whole thing i can talk about behind that but i don't have the time for um but just know that why i'm talking about this now is because it's been revealed that uh the, the scene spoilers if you haven't seen it but god it's been out for ages now just go watch it if you haven't already just bugger off if you don't want to know but the the final scene and and not the nightmare scene but the last scene with bruce wayne that you see in Zack snyder's justice league uh, where martian manhunter turns up at the end um that originally wasn't filmed that was um done after the fact where i'm just about to talk about now so originally kilowog and john stewart green lantern were meant to visit bruce wayne not martian manhunter and they filmed it with uh this guy his name's wayne t car it's important that they put the t in there because otherwise his name is wayne car and i'm sure everybody knows what i'm talking about and i'm sure he's gotten that a lot in life so i'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna touch on that any further but anyway um he was there zach picked him out um cast him as john stewart for this scene alongside a cg killiwog now you saw killiwog in the nightmare sequence he was dead uh, lying upon a bunch of rubble in the nightmare dream sequence and that's the same cg model that was made for this sequence at the end and this is um the actual cg model i do apologize i've forgotten the name off the top of my head of the designer behind that and i should have made a note of it but it's out there if you want to find it, it's on twitter all over the place just like this uh john stewart um from wayne carr now um zach filmed the this shot they filmed it and they had to get uh they had to get ben back to reshoot and change some of the lines for the martian man after appearance that's why it looks a bit different <laughs> uh in that scene uh you can tell he's, he's a bit slimmer in that scene uh it's definitely a reshot um so when warner brothers were you know viewing the the edit and you know because they, they have to approve it for whatever and they were like wait a minute no no no, you can't have kilowog and you can't have john stewart you can't have green lanterns um because we have plans for it on another project and he's like no no, no th this i want them in here it it's, needs to be there it's important blah 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 and they fought him on it and he was like whatever like 
if I can't have them, then you need to give me Martian Manhunter so I can do this scene. And are you doing anything with Martian? If not, give him to me. And that's why Martian Manhunter is uh, in it. And he organized to get Harry, Len Harry Lennox back to um, do... He directed Harry Lennox through a Zoom call <laughs> when he's got all the, the spots on him, like on another film studio, uh, to do that Martian Manhunter sequence, which is very interesting. It's just amazing how he got this movie finished. Like modern technology and what we have available to us man I, that's how we got this movie done um yeah so I, I, f I find that's just another thing where the conversation of this release of snyder cut campaign has been also including like a lot of the peoples of color um being removed from the joss whedon version so iris west got removed uh who plays uh who you know iris west is the uh, the girl that's in the car crash sequence that you see in the justice league Zack snyder's one she didn't make the movie ryan Choi, who was um in star labs with victor stone's father silas stone who um silas stone basically got most of his scene his scenes removed uh victor stone's most of his art got removed as well as his mum not being in the movie and they're all black ryan Choi, uh he was you know asian um so you can see the pattern here <laughs> we've got these people of color have been removed from that movie uh and other like female characters in that movie getting changed out for like sexist comments and doing um sexist things or uh, you know kind of insulting degrading things in the joss whedon one so and here's another one so wayne his character of john stewart his portrayal got removed again by warner brothers so it's just a unfor unfortunate series of consequences where all these people just happen to be not white <laughs> getting removed from this movie it just seems a bit on the nose you know um who knows <laughs> if there's anything there but it just seems very consequential but man i would have loved to have seen that i do like that um master manhunter is there that was very cool and it's great to see that harry lennox's character is now like retroactively canonized through man of steel all the way as being john john's the whole time and like he says he's he's realized he has an investment in his planet now and that's why he's come out where well, he didn't before he's kind of waiting for superman to do it because he just wasn't sure um <clears throat> so yeah that's just the last nugget that i wanted to drop i've been saying this for years and i've had some of my friends just going no way like this doesn't make sense but this was revealed ages ago like years ago but it's only like this weekend that's been confirmed by zach who pointed him out it's like yeah his name's wayne t car he was my john stewart like him saying that is confirming <laughs> uh that that was the thing and he explained what the scene was and so it's out of his mouth it's legit it's not just people speculating um so i can say now that yes that was the thing and those are official renders that's what they would have looked like <laughs> in the movie so it's just one more thing that was taken away um so that's why this restore the snyder cut thing is happening because we want to get all this go it was all there for warner brothers it's still there it is still there they just have to you know nut up and shut up and just acknowledge that all right we balls it <laughs> let's try and spin this in a positive way like we're on the fan side but they're doing the exact opposite so who knows what's gonna happen from here but what i do know from here is i'm going to finish this episode of chunk cast because we're just about coming up on an hour and i have to upload this so i do I do, i'm not going to apologize for being away i almost did um i will say yeah i'll just repeat don't give me shit about going away if i haven't uploaded on a weekend it's probably because i'm busy or i'm going away on a holiday somewhere or i need some time out or you know i'm just i don't want to do it uh but i will at best efforts every week uh, every sunday to put out an episode but by god if you give me shit about it like i've already muted and blocked a bunch of people that gave me shit about being away for two weeks like obsessive i i don't want any of that <laughs> i don't need any of that um and if you do give me that you are gone um i will be creating this kind of um community here as i go and um if you want to be one of those negative types you are going to get blocked and i don't care if i lose subscribers or if you if i block you and you find out and you unsubscribe i don't care the people that i want here are the guys that want to be here and just want to enjoy the my conversations or my perspective on things i'm not going to be uh, your puppet to be on demand or on call for when you need it you know go find other people that are more than happy to oblige to your commands that's not me 
So anyway, in saying that, <laughs> enjoy your evening. I've got a bloody slow slow cooked um, uh, corned beef out there that's been cooking for about four or five hours now. So I'm so hungry. I'm going to go hook into that. It's got some spuds in there and some nice spices. Yes. And it's a Sunday evening. Um, enjoy yourselves. And I will see you next Sunday. But until then, I hope this sound plays. Otherwise, it's going to be me sitting here awkwardly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that played. Otherwise, yeah, I was watching myself. That's going to be very awkward sitting there in silence. <laughs> if there are problems, I'll figure it out after I watch this back. <laughs> anyway, see you next week. Um, like I said, follow me on all my socials and we can still communicate and chat shit uh, during the week. Uh, so, yeah, goodbye. I'm just going to go before I say anything else. Bye! Bye. Bye. Subscribe.